So, my name is Matt Sanders. I'm the director of channels sales for the uh, for the East region. So, really, Sixterra is actually about a two and a half year old company, but we are the second largest um, data center outfit in the world. Um, that is retail services. Uh, if you take a look here, these are uh, where our facilities are. We're in 29 markets, uh, spanning across the globe. And you say, how does how does a two and a half year old company have that kind of a footprint today? Um, what we are is actually we acquired all of the the CenturyLink, Level Three, and Savas data center um, footprints, and then rebranded them, re-outfitted them, and created Sixterra about two and a half years ago. Uh, it was all privately done. It was about a $2.7 billion um, purchase. Um, and that came from the Medina Capital family down in South Florida, which is where actually Six Terra is headquartered down in Miami. Um, so that's kind of what we look like today from a footprint perspective, a very, very large data center outfit. Um, and what is data center? Um, has anyone sold data center services today? A couple people have. Does everyone know what a data center is? Say. So really, every customer has a data center. My wife has a hair salon. Her data center is her laptop, right? It's where they store all their data. Some people have it on site. But what is the purpose of having co-location services? There's a lot of things around co-location. A lot of it comes into security, compliancy, cost. The other big challenge with data centers when you have it on site is that it's a different business model. You're literally trying to run a data center while you're also trying to run your business. A lot of capex that goes into that, building out generators, making sure your H your HVAC is working properly. So really, people really want to focus on their core business. It gets reliability, and the biggest part about data centers is connectivity. Connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. You're going to hear that with Crown Castle, with all the people that you talk to. But the point of a data center is to house your data. You've got to be able to access it, and so that's really what we've tried to really hone in on is. How do we build a data center that's connected to every resources that you guys need? But when you look at a data center in general, you know, basically the overview always comes into a controlled entrance, right? You got to have security to get through the entrance, talking to a net network operations center. You've got your fuel, your fuel tanks, your generators, your UPS system. So everything is running through this systems. And so everything inside of this is secure. Through the meet me room, we've got multiple carriers and that's how you get access to your, to your um, um, environments but within that this is the biggest components then compliance he runs into play data centers are data centers you know you can take a look at my facility compared to Equinix compared to whoever we all provide what I just showed you the biggest part of them is going to come down to where they're located which is where we have a very good footprint and how you can connect to them and so if you look at our facilities today, we've got over 600 networks running through our data centers with uh, 120 different providers, as well as we have about 12 different providers built into every single data center on average. Some of them have more, some around eight, but for the most part on average, about 12 different providers that are built in. So the ability to get to our, our um, data centers is, is um, easy, <laughs> essentially. The other part is, who's heard of AWS or Azure, right? Google Cloud. People say, hey, they're going to go cloud first strategy or they want to be able to get to the cloud. The biggest challenge there is, how do you get to the cloud? How quickly can you get to the cloud? And so if you look at our data centers, of our 60 facilities, we have 43 facilities that sit within less than three milliseconds into AWS. Why that's important is because if you look at companies that say, you know, we are on net to AWS, right? They also are charging you to be on net with AWS. Their price points are extremely high. So when you take a look at it and say, would you be willing to go three seconds of latency compared to one second of latency, but basically take a $100, 100% $100 discount and save a lot of money on where you're going into that, that facility. Um, so co-location on demand is something unique to us. So we have the facilities, but what we've realized is that consumption of data centers is changing today. And so what we've built is our own product called basically CXD, which is data centers on demand. So public clouds are actually great, right? There's a lot of applications that leverage public cloud. They're not going away. Um, and these are, you know, different types of things, unpredictable, irregular use. People that have 
the ability to just spin things up, spin things down on demand because that's what they need. They don't need to have it for a long period of time. Uh, cloud native, native applications. But the biggest things is, is there's a lot of things that are not good for the cloud. And those are a lot of the things where you have to lift and shift enterprise applications. When they say we're going to go cloud, all in cloud, if you have to take all of your applications and rebuild them to work in AWS, that's not going to work. Um, steady state, if I know what this application is going to do, I know the cost of it on a monthly and annual basis, where in AWS you don't have those, or Google Cloud, or those type of solutions. And so, the biggest challenge, security and compliance is, you know, can you make sure that you can control what's going on in that environment, right? So, what we have today is a cloud first strategy. You're hearing it, I hear it all the time from executives, from board members, from CIOs, from anyone. It's cloud first strategy. We're going cloud first. Well, what does that really mean? It doesn't always have to be, just because you say cloud first, doesn't have to be AWS or Azure. So, We've been working a lot with Forrester and IDC and Gardner. We're actually out at the Gardner conference right now. We have a big uh, presence out there today where we're doing a lot of uh, uh, seminars and stuff. But IDC has done a um, survey and it said 85% of the people that they surveyed are basically repatriating their, their, uh, their applications. They're bringing them back, right? And with that, 80% of those are going into a private cloud solution. So these are solutions that we offer and there's a bunch of other people within the, the TCG portfolio that offer these private cloud solutions. The reason that they're doing this, obviously security is a big reason. They want to be able to secure things. We see all the stuff going on these days with so-and-so got hacked, or this application failed, or this was the back door is open here. So they want to be able to make sure they can control the security of it. Performance, control, cost. I can tell you right now, if anyone has a customer that said, I went to AWS and it was going to cost me this amount, ask them in six months what they're paying. It's probably doubled. Because what happened is, is that they're not taking into account all the, the, the spin that just happens within the public cloud environments. And so really controlling that cost is, is big. Um, so what are they doing? They're going from public cloud, they're coming back, they're looking at what do we do? Private clouds provide you a dedicated environment. You can control the cost. You have full control of that environment because it's just your environment. Performance, you can control the performance because it's built out to perform for your applications and the security. But then you have the global platform with the cloud, right? It's easy. If you look at today, people today are consuming products differently. They're not going to the old model, which is, hey, I'm going to pre-plan for the next three years. I'm going to make a purchase for three years, but I'll be at the end of that purchase in three years. They're, they're consuming things differently, right? If I can do this now, they go online, they type it in, they open it up, and they create a server. They create an environment. They're doing it across the board, whether it's, whether it's with you know, applications like email, whether it's applications like Salesforce, like all the different applications. The consumption of our customers are different today, which is great. That's what public clouds allow them to do, connectivity at scale. So what we have built ourselves is a cloud agile private cloud infrastructure called CXD. CXD stands for Sextera Extensibles Data Centers. Um, right now, we have it built into 12 of our facilities, or met metros, I would say. And essentially what CXD is, Sorry. is a software fabric that sits on top of our data centers. And it's built to control interconnectivity, as well as infrastructure. So what we have is um, basically a a Juniper spine network built throughout the entire environment, the layer two network that allows the customers to then um, connect to multiple things. So what I mean by that is if you ever have a customer that sits in co-location and they, let's say they get a ca cabinet today and you know, Dan will tell you all the time, a couple months or a year later, like, we need another cabinet, right? Great, awesome, let's go get it. It's not going to be next to your old one because we've already sold those to other people, right? So it's going to sit in a different part of the data center. And it's going to have a different connection and different IPs and stuff to that. So they're going to have to create some networking and you're going to have to go into different things. You're going to have two different environments. You're going to try to have them network together. Well, what CXD has done is that we've actually built that, like I said, with that, with that layer two network where we actually allow you to assign the IP schemes and it's your IP schemes. So wherever those two data, those cabinets sit within our data center, it's going to look like they're connected. They look like one network because it's all on the same IP um, uh, scheme that you have. 
Well, we also have data center campuses, right? So if you take a look at uh, our Virginia campus, we have six different data centers throughout that, throughout that metro, right? And so just because you're in one data center and you have stuff in another data center, again, you can have that look like one complete private network because of the way we built CXD out with this interconnected fabric. But here's where it gets fun, right? So what else do you want to do? Do you want to go on pre-provision network connectivity to internet services? Do you want to connect to on-ramps? Do you want to connect to carriers, let's say Crown Castle or CenturyLink? You can then go in and basically create a virtual cross-connect into their networks and then allocate those services through our CXD portal. So that's really nice. But where we got different is that we went out and then pre-deployed infrastructure sitting on our, on our data center's floor today, which is ready for consumption base. So the biggest challenge with a private cloud environment is that you got to sit down with an engineer and a salesperson and say, again, what does my plan look like for the next three years? And we're going to go and we're going to build out a private cloud environment that's going to satisfy the needs for the next three years. And we're going to over-provision applications. We're going to over-provision compute and storage to make sure it's all there when you need it, right? Well, that's great. So then all of a sudden that decides to take place. And then you go and you sign the MSA with whoever you're signing up with. And then they have to go acquire the gear. They go acquire the gear. Gear gets deployed. It gets racked and stacked. It gets tested. It gets developed. It gets deployed. And your timeline between deciding you needed it to when you could actually use it, uh, four to six months, right? Again, that's not the consumption model people are thinking today. They want it, they want it now, they want to deploy it. And so what we've deployed is our CXD model where we've actually have relationships with uh, the, the carriers here. So Fujitsu, Nutanix, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, Zadara, which is a uh, virtual storage solution. But what we've done is in our data centers, we've gone and we've pre-deployed Nutanix nodes, HPE bare metal servers. Fujitsu servers and where they're sitting ready for consumption. And so what you can do is say, all right, I have my data center today and I need some more infrastructure and I need it now. So I'm going to go into CXD, I'm going to create, log in, and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to deploy six instances of whether it's a Nutanix node or Hewlett Packard bare metal server, pre-deploy those Basically, within an hour, they are now part of your network. Your IP schemes, you now have brand new applications that you can then deploy on top of it. What am I doing? I'm providing the hardware, and I'm making sure the hardware is up and it's running, and then I pass over the user keys to you guys or your customers, where then they can go in and deploy the applications they want on top of it. From a partner community, you guys can then work with them on consulting any type of migration services. So you can work with them on deploying any type of managed services on top of it. If you want to manage their applications, if you want to manage their o OS, you want to provide them licenses for Microsoft or VMware, or whatever it is, you provide all that to them. We're not providing any of those services. We're providing the raw infrastructure to them. So now all of a sudden they say, you know what? We also need to bring in some, uh, some firewalls and maybe a little bit of storage gear. Can I deploy a cabinet? Oh well, yeah, right now we can go in pre-deploy and I can actually have a cabinet online, again, within an hour, the customer has the ability to go in and then deploy services within that cabinet for them today. So this is really our CXD model. Deploying resources, connecting your data center together to look and feel as one layer two network, connecting it to cloud infrastructure, connecting it to colo infrastructure, connecting it to any type of network connectivity. Now I'm going to go through this and not every single person here is going to freak out for a second, but I'll address the elephant in the room afterwards. So part of that portal, this is coming online January, maybe February, we'll have the ecosystem, the CXD ecosystem built out where now the customers themselves can say, not only do I need a cross connect to CenturyLink, I need a CenturyLink circuit back to my corporate office. So they're going to go in here and they're going to go in, select that and say, I need CenturyLink. We create a circuit, virtual cross connect to that, and then that connects to the circuit that CenturyLink delivers. And it takes the network back to their office. This can be done with Crown Castle and the data centers that they're built into, or Megaport. I need to go in and get a Megaport connection because I need to get to AWS, right? Or I need to uh, actively deploy services in Azure and anything else. Zadara, where they want to go and deploy uh, um, storage, virtual storage. This is really for object-based storage. You're going to see it with a lot of people that use S3 today in AWS. This is a great alter alternative cost-wise. It's very comparative. 
So this is one-click provision, automate services. We're working to deploy all kinds of services throughout this portal. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. What we have done is different than like an Equinix or other service portals where what we're doing is taking that Centrelink connection, submitting it off to Centrelink, getting a quote back, uploading it back into the system for the customer to go in and purchase that quote. What does that do? That takes revenue out of your pockets. Not good, right? So what we have been developing is how we take this, and so this entire portal is actually connected to our Salesforce instance, where any type of any time a customer is in our Salesforce, it is automatically tagged as a partner sale and what partner has sold that sale. So when that customer goes in and says, I need a Centrelink 10 gig circuit back to this office, it's going to go back into Salesforce and say, who's the agent of record? And we're gonna submit that quote back out to the agent and say, here's a quote request from your customer for Centrelink services. Can you please quote that service? They're gonna quote the service, it goes back in. If they select the services, you guys are now actually getting the sale through this portal. So it's allowing you to actually increase what you're doing to the customer, less touch points, automated systems. Same thing with Megapore or any of the other services that we deploy within here. Um, when we were working on this um, and it came to me, I actually went to Alan Mushlam, part of TCG here, and said, hey, get your take on this. And so he kind of put some ideas together. And so he helped us with the process and saying, hey, this is a better flow for us, right? The other part of this is, you know, when we have customers that are not with partners, we're going to try to take these quote requests and they'll spit to me in the east and say, hey, listen, there's a, there's a new Centrelink quote, a new Crown Castle quote. You got a partner that want to work this? And I can then spit that back over to Dan or Alan and we can get those into people's hands to start quoting. So, why is CXD important? CXD allows you to create a private hybrid cloud platform that you can manage, right? You can manage your gear, you can have the virtual infrastructure that you need on demand. Um, all that infrastructure, we typically do 12 month contracts on it, but if people need it, like there's a lot of retail, right? Let's just say it's retail season and they wanna go from October to January and they wanna have the infrastructure, we'll work with them offline and we'll actually deploy the services for them like that. Tax season's another big one, right? Um, so basically, Create the environment that you want. The other big part of it is, is availability regions. What we're hearing a lot of, which you may have not heard it yet, but it's going to be the biggest thing you're gonna hear in 2020 is edge. Edge, 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 right? Everyone's gonna talk, well, we gotta be the edge, we gotta have edge servers, we gotta have edge networks, we gotta have 5G's killing it, we gotta go edge. So, what this is allowing people to do is create availability zones. This puts your infrastructure at the edge, which you can then bring back to a central location. So you can say, listen, I need something in Amsterdam so that my EU markets can go to Amsterdam. I need something in the East Coast, the Central, the West, and Asia Pack. Well, guess what? Instantly, you could deploy availability zones with clicks of buttons now because of AC CXT. The other part is, is you want to rapidly deploy in a new market. Customer sits here in South Florida and says, you know what? We're getting really big in Dallas. We need to build, put something in Dallas. Well, guess what? Go in, they can easily click and deploy. And within, again, within the same day, all of this is done. It's typically within a couple hours. Um, but within the same day, they can have the infrastructure, they can have cabinets, they can have network, they can have co-location environments, they can have everything they want. So, why is this good? It's all software powered, it's actually proprietary to us. We've built out the backend components, connected it to the Juniper Spine Network, which was beyond what I know, he probably knows more about it than I do. Um, it's on demand. It's what the customers are looking for today. They want consumption-based purchasing. Here's consumption-based purchasing. Dedicated nodes. It is all privately dedicated. You're not put into an environment where you're getting resources within hardware. You're getting the actual hardware. We actually have to hand over the license keys from the manufacturer to the customer. So, Long-term options, short-term options, there's no channel conflict. The biggest thing we've done is built it so there's no channel conflict. We have one sales resource that works with you guys. Back again, if you look at the other providers doing um, private cloud, it's slow to market. All of the other people are basically looking at US only, right? If you wanna deploy things, they have a couple different environments they can deploy in the US. They also provide all the managed services on top of it, right? So that again, that's now taking away from your business where you can provide those services to the customers and actually make better margins. Long-term conflict contracts. Um, so if you look at buying triggers, use cases, right? Again, it's new applications. We have something new we're trying to deploy. Here's a great opportunity to put that in. 
geographical markets, disaster recovery is a big one, right? Hey, I'm running an entire environment here in Miami or West Palm, wherever, and I need to protect it. I need to get it out, right? You can get it out. We have availability zones across the US. You can deploy those infrastructures then. Um, outsourcing data centers, spin-offs of data centers, contract renewals are coming up. You know, data center, trying to move someone from a data center is really hard, right? Because they got to turn off all their applications, move it, turn them back on. Here's a great way to say, hey, listen, your contracts are coming up. We can actually active, active deploy this. You can sync your applications, turn them down, and then all of a sudden you've got an entire availability zone available now. So um, I will get this presentation over to Abby so you guys have access. This is all the information, garden reports, um, 451 reports, different things on not only Sixterra, but uh, our platform, our CXD, and how it works. So uh, that is what. I've got for you any questions for me?